So how many years passed by since that you started working uh, for the planet, original Planet of the Apes? Well, we made the film uh, in 1964, 65. So, you know, what is that, 40 years? Yes, and the, how it started for you as an art director? And well, the, the, they had started the picture several times, and they did tests, and they tried, as has been published, they tried several different uh, makeup solutions, mm -hmm. and uh, they finally got the picture going as a, as a real project at Fox when they got the cast sort of together and they, they, um, they asked me to do the picture quite surprisingly in my career and, and so we started out, I worked with Franklin Schaffner, the director, and we scouted and we tried different, several different solutions to the, to the script and ultimately um, um, the, the, the story as you see it, as it was made, uh, came out in, in script form, and so we attacked it and adjusted it to suit the locations we were finding. The, the uh, edict from the studio was to make the film um, uh, all in Southern California and make the film in property that they had control. So. Uh, the idea of shooting the, the opening of the picture um, in, the, in the dry area of the planet up in U Utah and Lake Powell came up and it was, uh, became everybody's agreed that we had to do that. So we, we uh, started the film there and, and the first part up to the waterfall uh, if you remember the picture, uh, was made all in Utah. Hmm. And uh, the waterfall actually was in the Malibu Hills at the ranch that 20th Century Fox owned at the time. Mm -hmm. So that was our green belt. Mm -hmm. And um, from there, the rest of the picture was shot at the ranch or on sound stages. Mm -hmm. um, and then we'd like to so the question about the genesis of the spaceship, that which is very popular among fans, how that well, design? Well, at the when we chose Utah and the the, the cliffs and, and the geography of Utah was was stark in its own way, but it was what we wanted to do is create a spaceship that also looked very foreign to that. So we wanted it to not be fluid or rounded, we wanted it to be very angular, and we so we came up with the idea of making it very pointed, and and um, so uh, the minute that was okayed from the sketches and drawings, we went forward on that premise, and we took the, built the set of metal, because we knew we had to put it into the water in Lake Powell, so we, we uh, took it up to Lake Powell, assembled it, and took it out to a site which we had previously picked and anchored it in about 300 feet of water. That became difficult because what was the problem in Lake Powell, the Colorado River was a thousand feet wide and it shelved off and underneath the water were these shelves so when we put anchors out they would roll down and then, which we thought were near shore, at night they'd roll down because it was stone and drop into 300 feet of water so we had very difficult time stabilizing the position of the spaceship for the filming and being able to move it to the um, uh, angles for the sun and for the actors and for the director. And the, how about the designing of the Icarus a spaceship itself? It was a, a leather, you designed it by yourself? Well, at that time NASA was experimenting with, uh, with what they called the Dinosaur Program, which was a program just before, I believe, when they were perfecting the, the shuttle and the shape of the shuttle. And they were devices that they thought could make re-entry into an atmosphere and 
and uh, but they were all rounded and you know we couldn't copy that anyway so we did our own sort of uh, uh, idea of that that type of, of spaceship and that what what turned out the the gold on the nose was just a design thing. The fact it was white worked well with the background that was that was in Utah, which was very red and, and you know very strange. So the sort of pristine, clean ship lands in this area that's that's very foreboding, and that was the whole idea. The uh, the idea, if you'll notice in the picture, you don't see the spaceship come down through space. Mm -hmm. um, I kept thinking that that would be a difficult shot to make, uh, be, to be believable. Mm -hmm. So I suggested to the director that uh, maybe we should do it all subjective camera so that the audience in the theater is actually riding with the spaceship as it crashes into the water and then as it comes up out of the depths out of the darkness you see the Utah in the background and it and then you pull back and that's when the when the uh, astronauts began to awaken so that's how we tied that together and uh, I hear that uh, the name of Icarus it was uh, named by the one of the fans and originally, how did you call it the spaceship? You just called it the spaceship, or did you have any name for that? Well, I personally don't recall the word Icarus was ever mentioned in the, in the film. Mm. Uh, if it was, it would have been in Heston's uh, prologue, you know, mm. in his opening speech. But um, it was a, the, the script writer named it and there was no logo or anything written on the ship that said Icarus. Yes. That was just a figment of the script and yes. it was not really necessary to the story. So we just, when you mentioned Icarus, I couldn't remember that we ever had a name for it, mm. unless it's dialogue in the picture. Yeah. And uh, I hear that the uh, Icarus in the TV series uh, is uh, the shape is quite similar to the the one that escaped from the planet of the apes. Well, we use the same spaceship three times. Mm -hmm. We use the original one. Yes. It existed on the Fox backlot. It was in storage and it was on exhibition for some years at the front gate. Mm -hmm. And so we would just take that and and uh, um, oh, and in. And beneath the Planet of the Apes, I think we had it up in uh, Red Rock Canyon. We hauled it up and had it be a wreck, and then in, in uh, Escape, or as I remember, Return, Escape to, of the Planet of the Apes, we, we had, took it up to Malibu um, and brought it in out of the surf. Then so how about the... It was the same prop. How about the TV series one? They, they use the same one in the TV series? I think by the third time we used it, it was pretty ruined. It, it was falling apart, so I don't know whether it still existed or not. I, I never saw the series. Hmm. I, I wasn't interested in, in that was after me. Yeah. So how many days uh, did you spend to design the spacesuit? Oh, that's hard to say. Yeah, you yeah. remember. <laughs> Actually, it moved pretty fast. Once we, once we hit on what we wanted to do, we turned it over to the draftsmen. Um, the set designers drew it up, and we handed it to the, to the uh, construction department at the studio, and it, we just went forward. I mean, there wasn't a lot of you know, once the director okayed it, the producer okayed it, it was, they spent a lot more time developing the makeup and trying to satisfy everybody's vision of what the makeup should be. Wardrobe was pretty simple, you know, they, once we had the scheme of what, how, what, what the picture was going to look like, it became a, a pretty fast, not by today's standards, we didn't spend a year on it. 
They may have spent a year trying to decide what to do, but when we decided to do it, we just got it done. And it was not an expensive picture. I, I thought it was two or three million, but I heard uh, uh, the quote that it was about five, uh, which was pretty expensive for a Fox picture. So they made a good commitment to make that film. And it was a gamble, you know, that it would nobody ever had any idea would achieve the popularity that, that it still has. And back in those days, that when you create the design of the spaceship, that uh, you comes up with a lot of different models and types, or just uh, the you're searching for that. No, we single. went we went from sketches to we had a model small model yes. and once that was approved we just built it yes. we there wasn't choices of shapes or anything mm. everybody liked it so we said we'll do it besides the uh, spaceships do you have any other well you mean the how the, the architecture was yes. developed yes. well we had ideas when it, when it became apparent they wanted to look like it was not Earth and yes. come up with some kind of architecture that was, uh, you know, unusual and different. Then we began researching, uh, you know, different kinds of sculpture and, and natural forms and finally came up with a combination of uh, um, Gaudí's work in Spain. Uh, the Goreme Valley in Turkey mm -hmm. and uh, uh, Watts Towers and somehow that that I guess the word they use now is language of those things we put together some sketches and began to develop a look and, and once once the producer and director bought into that then we created a system to build those buildings and it was a very original system. Uh, there wasn't anything around, you know, known to, you couldn't do it out of plywood because it was totally free form and, and straight. So we had to come up with a system to do all those sculptural shapes. And, and uh, we built maquettes of the town, you know, at, at scale. And we, we uh, uh, reproduced those in full scale. There were drawings done for the record, but mainly we used the the actual going with sculptors going from this size up to full scale to get those shapes. Uh, you, why you excited about that? You are doing the yeah, something new, and everybody knew that you are doing something new and bringing the new image. Yeah, I think we. We were excited about about coming up with something different, but it was it was doing the job. You know, we didn't think we were doing some groundbreaking thing. It was just figuring out how to get the work done. Yeah. But somehow it turned out to be a grand, groundbreaking thing. I think. Well, I'm pleased that it is. You know, it's a, it's a privilege to be part of it. And, uh, and I made a lot of good friends on the picture, with the actors and the director and, the, you know, John Chambers, the makeup uh, designer, and Mort Hack, the costume designer, and uh, Norman Rocket was the set dresser, and we had L.B. Abbott was the uh, visual effects uh, supervisor, and, you know, all these were great friends of mine. We, we became a real collaboration with Franklin Shafter. I'm still friends with Franklin Shafter's family. And, and, uh, it was good days.